Welcome to the e-commerce badassery podcast, the place for scrappy female entrepreneurs who want to learn actionable steps and strategies to grow the traffic, sales, and profit in your e-commerce business. I'm your host, Jessica Totillo Coster, a 20-year retail veteran who spent three years as the only employee of a seven-figure online store. That shit was crazy. I know exactly how it feels to do all the things and I'm sharing everything I learned the hard way so you don't have to. I may have started this business by accident, but supporting badass bosses like you lights me the fuck up and I am so stoked to see you grow. Are you ready, babe? Let's roll. Welcome back to another episode of the e-commerce badassery podcast. I'm your host, Jessica Chitillo Coster. Hanging out with so many e-commerce entrepreneurs makes me think about starting another product-based business. I feel like there is definitely one in me. I'm just not 100% sure what it would be. My background is in apparel and accessories, but the idea of managing sized inventories got me like, oh, hell no. Then I keep thinking maybe something home decor related since I'm about to get immersed in that world with the new place, but who knows. What I really want to do is an accessory line, shoes, handbags, and sunglasses, but the thought of starting something from scratch is so overwhelming. But even though I don't know what I would sell, I do know how I would sell it if I were starting that business. So I thought it would be fun to share it here on the podcast in the hopes that it sparks some exciting ideas for you. And even if you've been in business for a while, I recommend you keep listening because you just never know what might spark the creativity for you along the way. Since it's easier to build a strategy when you have a particular product in mind, let's pretend I'm starting a bold, modern, rock and roll sunglasses brand. Designer-inspired styles, but affordable, say 50 to 60-ish bucks per pair. And picture exaggerated cat eyes, squared off styles, mostly in black acetate. You can picture it, right? So first, I'm going to break down what I would do in terms of setting up the brand, the website, and the overall customer experience. Then I'll dive into a general timeline and strategy for how I would launch and market the brand. I'd position it from a fashion stylist's point of view, focusing on being a resource for style overall and leaning heavily into pop culture. I'll have a few key styles that I stock all the time, and then each season I'll have one to three unique styles that are more seasonal or trend-focused that I release on a traditional fashion season schedule. Because this is essentially a fashion brand, I'm going to invest in some really kick-ass lifestyle photography right from the start. We'll do it here in LA, outside, girls in cut-off shorts and leather jackets. You know, that gritty vibe. At first, I'll try and do the individual product shots myself with a pop-up light box. But if they suck because reflections are a bitch, I'll invest in a professional for that. My website will, of course, be hosted on Shopify, and I'll use Klaviyo as my email marketing platform. For my Shopify theme, I'll use Impulse. It's super slick and modern, and in all black and white, it'll go perfect with the overall brand vibe. When I set up my e-commerce email automations, I'll focus on FOMO and treating yourself, feeling like a rock star in your messaging. And in my post-purchase email, I'll include some care instructions for the product, like not wearing them on your head. I'm so guilty of this and it always stretches them out. Show them how to tighten them, etc. And then some fashion inspiration or outfit ideas for the different styles. In addition to the sunglasses that I manufacture on my own, I'll also get some other product to sell as an after-checkout cross-sell to bump up that AOV. The glasses will likely already include a case and a cleaning cloth, so maybe an eyeglass repair kit or a cleaning solution. And I'll use the app Selly to add this functionality to my Shopify site. I'll also add in some additional cross-sells or bundle options, though I won't necessarily expect it to drive a ton of extra revenue at first because I don't have a wide product assortment. And it's a bit harder to get people to double the initial amount of money they were planning to spend, but worth a shot for those who like to collect sunglasses. And I can also do this with Selly. When it comes to the packaging, I'm going to be really intentional with this. 
I'm not necessarily going to go all out right from the jump, but like we heard on last week's episode about packaging for product-based businesses, I will make it memorable, emotional, and shareable. Ideally, the sunglasses would have a hard-ish case so that I could get away with just using a bubble mailer for shipping, but I would probably customize the case itself in some way. Maybe it has a fun inspo message on the inside or even on the outside, something that would make them want to keep using the case even if they lost the sunglasses or they got worn out. And the cleaning cloth would also be branded. Just a little something to stay top of mind. Then for the shipping, I would use a simple black bubble mailer with some inserts that encourage them to share with their friends. Maybe there's a QR code for a music playlist. Ultimately, the goal is to make it special enough that they feel compelled to share. And I would implement a customer reward and referral program, likely using Stamped along with their customer review platform to build loyalty and encourage word of mouth advertising all of which I would talk about on those inserts and in my post-purchase emails. As far as site functionality, there are a few apps I would add to help provide my customers with a better shopping experience. One of those being a quiz to help them find their perfect glasses based on their preferences, which would also serve as a lead generation and market research tool. Additionally, I would add an augmented reality, AR, app, so shoppers can upload their photo and try on the glasses before purchasing them to hopefully limit the number of returns and customer service issues. For SEO purposes, I would create a few in-depth blog posts targeted toward my ideal customer, who in this case is a fashion-forward person who loves to accessorize and wants to look expensive. Some evergreen ideas would be how to look expensive on a budget, how to dress up jeans and a t-shirt, how to get that quintessential cool girl style. Of course, I will do some keyword research first when it comes to creating those titles. But do you notice how I'm not creating posts like the best sunglasses shape for round faces? Not that it isn't relevant to my audience or that they won't have that question, but it's too broad and it doesn't necessarily speak to the specific person who is going to like my particular style of sunglasses, and it could end up sending me a ton of irrelevant traffic. I'd rather help them do that through the quiz once I've already qualified that they are my perfect customer and like the style of sunglasses that I sell. In addition to this evergreen content, I'll also create seasonal fashion and beauty content based on trends. This will not only serve as blog content, but content that can be broken up and used on social media too. And of course, in all of this content, my sunglasses will be featured and linked to from the blog posts. Think about it like this. If someone is on the internet trying to get that perfect messy lob look and she wants to wear it with a leather jacket and some Valentino rock studs, she's probably going to like my sunglasses. So I'm going to create content for her. Once I have all of those basics in place, then it's time for pre-launch. I'll start at least eight weeks out posting on social media and starting to tease that this new brand is coming and to build my pre-launch email list. In addition to getting first dibs on the line when it drops, everyone will get entered to win some grand prize. Maybe it's one of every style in the line or maybe it's three pairs of sunglasses, something like that. And I'll also use social media ads for reach and engagement to try and dial in my audience, all with the goal of building that pre-launch email list. I'll partner with a handful of influencers for a two-week campaign leading up to the launch. The idea is to go deep with fewer influencers who want to talk about me a lot versus just one post on their feed. And I also want them to have a bit of crossover in their audience. So their people are like, damn, everyone is talking about this sunglasses brand. I need in on it. Remember, people need to hear things multiple times before they take action. So having multiple influencers talk about me will ramp up those touch points with my potential customer. For social in general, I'll focus on Instagram and TikTok. 
part of my campaign with these influencers and content creators will be them creating content that I can share on my own channels. And as the business grows and those partnerships become more meaningful, I would also look to do some design collaborations with them. Maybe it's one style for a season or a mini collection. And then as a phase two or three, I would look at potentially white labeling with these influencers where you run ads about your product from their page. This might be cost prohibitive in the beginning, so I'm not 100% sure about it. During the pre-launch, I'll keep the subscribers engaged by sharing behind the scenes content of building the line, asking them for feedback and making them feel like they're part of the process. And I'll probably bring many chat into this process. If you haven't listened to that episode, definitely go back because it's a really cool tool and makes it really easy to grow your list from Instagram. Once I'm launched and fully live, I'll look to partner with some subscription boxes that have a decent subscriber base and who work with their own influencers for unboxing videos and online features. This way I'm getting in front of their audience and the audience of their influencers. I'll include an insert with a QR code and an exclusive discount for their people to try and drive them back to my website. I won't necessarily rely on this for direct sales, but look at it as a visibility play. Any sales that come from it will be considered a bonus. Depending on my production costs, I may create an exclusive style that I can potentially do at a bit of a lower cost whether it's because of the order quantity that I'm purchasing or the materials that I use. I likely wouldn't do this forever unless it was a really awesome box that I wanted to be a part of, but it's a great way to get a lot of exposure all at once in the beginning. Now I'm a few months into the business and my main focus at this point is dialing in my processes, my audience, my content, etc. I'll look to start scaling ads based on what I've learned about my audience so far. And once I know things are nailed down and I've got my shit together, then I start looking into collaborating with other small businesses, likely other accessory brands who sell different products to a similar customer as me. This will especially be a focus for Q4 as sunglasses aren't exactly a traditional holiday gift. But if I partner with other fashion brands, it will put me in front of people who are in that shopping mood and I have a better chance of getting some action. Then I go into full marketing mode where I'll create a rinse and repeat system in my business where I focus on building hype for seasonal product launches and marketing campaigns like spring break, bachelorette and festival season, start of summer, etc. We'll lean into pop culture, music and fashion for content to keep our audience engaged and continue to work with content creators and influencers. If I were cooler or got better at creating the content myself, I would. But knowing me, I'm better off just outsourcing that to someone else and bonus if they help me reach more people through their own audience. Once I've established the brand, then I may consider wholesale, but I would likely stick to smaller boutique stores. I'm not trying to be the next big D to C brand who relies on ads for volume, many of whom are suffering right now, by the way. I still prefer to be a smaller business with a small but mighty customer base. I'd look at expanding the line to other accessories to build that customer lifetime value and keep them coming back. As the biz starts growing and we're rocking and rolling, it'll be time to upgrade my systems and operations. I'll want to add additional tools like Gorgeous to manage customer service and ShipStation for shipping and fulfillment if I choose to keep fulfillment in-house. If I'm only selling sunglasses and just have a few standard packaging inserts I want to add, it might be easy enough to outsource to a 3PL, but who knows? It's also nice to control the entire experience. So now I've got everything important in place. I've dialed in my operational and marketing systems. What's next? Take a vacation. Seriously, I go to an adults-only all-inclusive resort in Mexico where I can hang by the pool and sip margaritas, basically the place I had my honeymoon. But from a business perspective, now that I've got some decent brand recognition and a solid customer base, I start a Facebook group. 
Depending on your business, you can definitely start a group sooner, especially if you're going to be more topic focused versus brand focused. But I think for this product, a brand focused group is best. And so I want to make sure I have a decent pool of people to pull from so I can get a lot of traction early on in the group. I would use this group for market research and to build a really tight community among my customers. This group, my email marketing, and the rewards program are the main ways I'll focus on customer retention. If you're not sure whether you should have a Facebook group for your product-based business or what type of group you should create, check out episode 29 of the podcast. I'll put the link in the show notes. All right, so now I've got the retention system in place and I can focus on new customer acquisition. So how do I get in front of more people? Most likely through collaborations, influencer marketing, PR, and getting placements in holiday gift guides, things like that. Whatever I can do to leverage other people's audiences and get more eyes on my e-commerce business. A few other quick notes before we go. First, there are some passive things I would probably do, like setting up my Instagram shop and adding my products to Google Shopping. I would also consider Google Ads if the data told me that people were searching for a product like mine on the internet. That could be an entire episode on its own, but it all starts with the keyword research. If people are searching for what I'm selling, then it's worth a shot. The same is true for a platform like Pinterest. I probably wouldn't start here. Even though it is a long game, so arguably you think you should do it sooner. But in my experience, Pinterest brings a lot of traffic, but not a lot of conversions. So with limited resources, this probably isn't where I would start. But if I had everything else dialed in, I'd put some energy behind a strategy for six months to a year to see what impact it had. And then, of course, the whole way through, I'm learning and optimizing as I go. There's really no way around that part. Whoever said e-commerce was passive was lying. Just saying. So I'd love to know what you thought about today's episode. Did it spark any ideas for you? Did you have any aha moments? If so, hit me up on Instagram or in the e-commerce badass three Facebook group. I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. And I'll see you on the flip side, friend. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. If you like what you heard, I'd be so grateful if you'd leave a review on Apple Podcasts and don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode. And if you're looking to surround yourself with more product entrepreneurs who totally get your life right now, get your booty on over to the e-commerce badassery Facebook group. Can't wait to see you there. Until next time, e-commerce friends, stay badass.